This lesson is on gynecomastia. True gynecomastia must be distinguished from pseudogynecomastia. True gynecomastia is the presence of glandular breast tissue, whereas pseudogynecomastia is accumulation of adipose tissue. Pseudogynecomastia is an accumulation of adipose tissue in the area of breast that is commonly seen in overweight males. True gynecomastia is characterized by the presence of palpable fibroglandular mass at least 0.5 cm in diameter that is located concentrically beneath the nipple and the areolar region. There are two types of gynecomastia, physiologic and the pathologic gynecomastia. Let's start from physiologic form of gynecomastia. There are also two types of physiologic forms of gynecomastia. From this, the first one is neonatal gynecomastia. Neonatal gynecomastia is a transient gynecomastia which occurs in 60 to 90% of male newborns, secondary to exposure to estrogen during pregnancy. Breast development might be asymmetrical, and galactoria is seen in approximately 5%. Most cases of neonatal gynecomastia resolve within 4 to 8 weeks of birth, but a few can last as long as one year. The second type of physiologic gynecomastia is pubertal gynecomastia. During early puberty to mid-puberty, up to 70% of males develop various degrees of subareolar hyperplasia of the breast. Physiologic pubertal gynecomastia may involve only one breast, and it is also not unusual for both breasts to enlarge at disproportionate rates or at different times. Tenderness of the breast is common but transitory. Spontaneous regression may occur within a few months, and it rarely persists longer than two years. And significant psychosocial distress might be present, especially in obese males with relative large breasts. So in this case, we should have to under address the psychosocial distress because this is a transient, it will disappear after a few months. The cause of pubertal gynecomastia is thought to be multifactorial, including an imbalance between estrogen and androgen action at the level of breast tissue, and also leptin and the luteinizing hormone, which came during puberty, which directly stimulate breast development and an increased sensitivity to estrogen and relative androgen resistance in the affected tissue. As androgen levels continue to rise in later puberty, most cases resolve and no specific treatment is needed in the case of pubertal gynecomastia. The other is pathologic gynecomastia. Pathologic gynecomastia might be due to different reasons. From this, familial gynecomastia is one of it, which can occur as an X-linked or autosomal dominant limited trait. In the case of familial gynecomastia, some of them were found to be caused by constitutive activation of P450 aromatase enzyme, which leads to increased peripheral conversion of synantisteroids to estrogen, which is called increased aromatization. The other might be due to exogenous source of estrogen. Very small amount of estrogen can cause gynecomastia in male children, and accidental exposure may occur by inhalation, percutaneous absorption, or ingestion. Common source of estrogen include oral contraceptive pills and oral and transdermal estrogen preparations. The other pathologic form of gynecomastia is gynecomastia, which can also occur secondary to exposure to medications. In this case, those medications decrease the level of androgens, they might increase estradiol or displace androgens from breast androgen receptors. Certain drugs that cause gynecomastia include spironolactone, alkylating agents, anabolic steroids, human chorionic gonadotropins, ketoconazole, cimetidine, androgen inhibitors such as flutamide, they are all associated with the occurrence of gynecomastia. The other is Klinefelter syndrome. And other cause of male hypogonadism are all strongly associated with gynecomastia. In the case of Klinefelter syndrome, significant gynecomastia is seen in 50% of adolescents. In addition to Klinefelter syndrome, other undervalidating conditions that cause gynecomastia include partial androgen insensitivity and 70 ketosteroid ductal deficiency. When gynecomastia is associated with galactoria, always we should have to consider prolactinoma. 
hyperthyroidism alters the ratio of androgen to estrogen by increasing bound androgen and decreasing the free testosterone. This may result in gynecomastia in up to 40% of cases. Gynecomastia is also seen in malnourished patients after restoration of normal nutrition or during refeeding, in whom it may result from hepatic dysfunction or abnormal activation of the gonadotrophin axis. When we came to evaluation of gynecomastia, in pubertal cases, a detailed history and a physical examination may all that is needed to exclude rare pathologic causes. Historical evaluation should include family history of male relatives with gynecomastia, history of liver or renal disease, use of medications or drugs of abuse, and exposure to herbal and cosmetic products that may contain phytoestrogens. Physical examination should include special attention to the breast, looking for overlaying skin changes, fixation, local lymphadenopathy and the nipple discharge as well as testicular exam. All pre-pubertal cases as well as pubertal cases with suspicious features should be investigated. The initial laboratory evaluation should include thyroid function test to rule out hyper hyperthyroidism as I have said above testosterone, stradiol, human coronary gonadotropin, luteinizing hormone, and the prolactin levels. Because of circadian variation, this level should ideally be obtained in the morning. In selected cases, karyotype, diiropindastinone sulfate, liver, and the renal function can be done. Gonadotropin levels may be useful screen for clean filter syndrome, and it will be elevated in pubertal males with clean filter syndrome. If they are elevated, a karyotype should be performed to confirm clinical filter syndrome. When we came to treatment, treatment in case of benign or physiologic pubertal gynecomastia usually consists of reassuring the boy and his family of the physiologic and the transient nature of the phenomena. When the enlargement is striking and the persistent and cause serious emotional disturbance to the patient, specific treatment may be justified. Agents that have been used for medical treatment include androgens, aromatase inhibitors, and estrogen antagonists. If medical treatment is attempted, it should be in early, during the first 12 months. In those cases where breast development is excessive and causes significant physiologic distress and if medical treatment fails to regress in 80 to 24 months or if it is not spontaneously regressing during this month, surgical removal of large breast tissue is indicated, particularly males who have complete or near completed pubertal development. Careful examination and the laboratory testing to exclude non physiologic causes are advisable before proceeding to surgery. This is all about gynecomastia. Thank you for watching.